Hi, my name is Ryan LaRock with Dolan Bailey, and today I'm going to show you a very traditional uh, braised short rib with a red wine reduction. Um, we're going to start here with a very traditional mirepoix, which is um, onions, carrots, celery. I like to use a little bit of Roma tomatoes to, to bring in that kind of sweet sweetness that you would expect, expect out of a tomato. Um, so what I've done is I, I've put these on a pan, I've tossed them with a little bit of olive oil. So I'm going to bring these to an oven 350 degrees for about 25 to 30 minutes just to get a real nice roast and you know, start that caramelization process. So while we have our vegetables roasting in the oven, we're going to move back to the rest of the meal. And for a liquid for this braise, we're going to start with, I prefer a veal stock. You can certainly use beef stock. Um, um, I would try to stay in the beef and veal um, family. In this case, we will use a veal stock. We'll add a little bit of just a nice, simple table red wine, something that you would prefer to drink yourself. It's always a good rule of thumb when working with a, uh, making any kind of a sauce out of wine. About two cups or so. There. And then I'm also going to add a couple of aromatic herbs. In this case, we're going to use some rosemary and fresh bay leaves. And we'll get that all into a pot and working. And then one other thing I, li I like to do is just a little bit of sugar, just a little bit of um, like a nice raw sugar, just to help kind of mellow out the bitterness of some of the, the wine in the, in the stock. So we'll get that going. The meat that we're actually going to prepare today is a boneless short rib, and uh, it's a very flavorful piece of meat, very rich. Um, definitely needs a good time braising. If you don't braise it out appropriately, it could be a, a little bit on the chewy side, but there's a lot of good kind of gelatinous flavors to a, to a boneless short rib. So here I have two pieces that are about a pound and a half a piece, roughly three pounds. I'm going to give them a good generous um, seasoning with salt. It's a nice kosher salt. Almost seems a little heavy on the salt, but you definitely want to make sure that it gets in there. We'll flip those over. And then just some fresh cracked black pepper. And one of the most important things about braising short ribs or any kind of meat, you see a lot of people, they'll, they'll want to just take that meat and put it into a crock pot and throw some liquid over the top of it, um, which you're, you're certainly welcome to do, but uh, you really want to start with a good pan sear. You've got to get that caramelization on the meat going. Um, so we'll just start with a nice hot pan, just a little bit of an olive oil, you know, maybe with a, or this is more of a vegetable oil with a 10% mix of olive oil. Just a little medium to cook in. We'll hear that nice sizzle. That means we're gonna get it some immediate caramelization when we hear that sizzle. Over here my uh, my stock is starting to come to a simmer. That's really starting to pull that wine and that and that uh, the veal stock together. We want to reduce that just a little bit, not a lot, because once we sear this meat, we're going to transfer it back to a pan where we're going to put the braising liquid back over the top of it and go to an oven to finish the actual braising process. Meat can tend, depending on the, the cut of meat, and even more so than the cut, the, the actual character of that particular animal itself could take less or more time to braise. So it's really hard to give you a set time on how long it will take this, this to uh, braise appropriately. Um, and it's generally going to be, a, for, I would, for these three pounds, probably around two hours. Could be a little less, could be a little more, but I'm going to show you a, a good technique for, for um, testing the doneness of a braised item. So we're going to brown this meat for about three to four minutes per side. We get to see some real nice caramelization here. That caramelization comes from the sugars in the meat browning up nicely. The sugar there is also going to lend to the braising liquid, which is really going to help mellow it out and make it a little sweeter. 
Okay, so now that we have, uh, we're about to finish up with our searing process here, I've taken the roasted vegetables from the oven and I've added those to my braising liquid, my red wine and veal stock reduction. And I'm actually going to deglaze this pan with a little bit of this veal stock red wine. This will actually pull all of that, those pan drippings and all those good sugars that come out during that caramelization process and bring those into the, uh, the braising liquid that we're going to use to finish this product with. So just let that cook off. And this piece over here. So a little bit more of this in here. This seems like a lot of vegetables and mirepoix, but it's after it braises out a lot of the liquid and, and sugars from those um, from the carrots and the celery and the onions are going to uh, make their way into that braising liquid which will lend to a really robust flavor. We can now take that and we're going to pour that right over this beef mixture, over the beef short ribs. Just gonna a little bit more broth. And you want the, you want the meat to be about three quarters of the way covered with liquid, and then we're gonna put this into an oven at about 300 degrees for approximately two hours um, until it is um, fork tender. When we can put a skewer into the meat, and the the meat will stay in the liquid when you lift up and not pull out with the skewer and that's really the proper way to know when a short rib is ready to go so I'm gonna go ahead and cover this with tin foil so once it's covered with tin foil we're just gonna go right to the oven for about two hours at 300 degrees okay so our meat is done we've pulled it out of the oven I'm just gonna remove the tin foil here see all those nice wispy flavors coming off there so I'm going to actually take the meat out of the braising liquid itself and transfer that to another pan to let it rest for just a, about 10 minutes or so before we actually carve to serve. Then I'm going to take the rest of the uh, braising liquid and I'm going to strain that into a sauce pot. this around to let all that liquid out. Okay, now we're going to let this come up to a, a little bit of a boil to reduce it to a consistency that we would like for a sauce, just a little bit thicker than it is now. And uh, once we get that to the right consistency, we're going to finish that with a little bit of fresh butter, just to bring, kind of round all those flavors together and mellow it out a little bit. So we're just adding our butter right now, just to kind of bring this sauce together. And uh, we're about to plate here. I've prepared ahead of time a little bit of fresh creamy polenta, which I'm going to put on the plate now. This is just a simple polenta. Uh, you can serve this with mashed potatoes, uh, roasted potatoes. As I said, I prefer the polenta. And then we will take our meat. Want to cut it against the grains. these Brussels sprouts on here. Get some of that nice bacon on there. Put 
and then of course the sauce. And there we have it.